All right, hello. So this is ECED 3204 microprocessors course, and I'm gonna be teaching you about lab number one. And so this video will just very briefly go over uh, how the lab will work. You'll have to read the whole printed lab to get all the details. Um, so this lab uses the microcontroller board for from the Dalhousie University. And if I turn on the camera here, you can see when you get the board itself, there's a few sections to it. So this is the actual main uh, microprocessor. So the microprocessor is this big chip here. And this chip we're actually going to download and program with uh, whatever you want it to do. So a lot of our labs are, will be doing very basic things, but you can do all sorts of interesting uh, projects using these microcontrollers. So the microcontroller itself um, plugs in to a breadboard and you can see sort of there's a few different pins on it. All of this one row of pins here um, is designed to sort of line up with just the edge of the breadboard. And at the same time, on the back, you'll see this, the positive and negative rail um, lines up with these two other pins. I don't know if you can just see them in there. Uh, these two other pins. So you should be able to sort of just plug the whole thing into the board. Uh, when it's plugged in, as a bit of a warning, you right here, uh, you might have a jumper. You'll probably want to remove this. Uh, what this jumper is going to do, and so the jumper it might look like different things, but it'll be you know something like that, um, and so you just pull it out. The problem is that that jumper uh, is going to put whatever the input power is will be on this positive rail uh, here, the the red plus. So it's not five volts by default. Uh, instead, it's you know you could have ten volts in, and this plus will be ten volts, which you you may want later um, if you're doing op amps or things that need higher voltages. But for all of the labs in this course, you won't need it. So just to be safe, you should remove that because otherwise you could damage this board or your circuit. Um, so to actually load programs to this board, we have this other uh, programmer board, and it just sort of plugs in like oops, like that. Um, and that's your whole sort of development environment. So the programmer board, you can just plug into the computer um, and you can just leave it plugged in. So we can use this to download code. If you're later doing stuff like for the robot course, you can then remove that, test your code, connect it back up to download new versions. Uh, and we'll also learn how to use this for debug. At the same time, you should have a power jack. So I'm using this, uh, this power jack that's wired and connected to a power supply set for around 10 volts. Um, something like that should be fine. Uh, the, the polarity is backwards from what's written on the jack itself. This board expects the uh, positive voltage to be the outer rim here and the negative voltage, the zero volts, to be the input pin. Uh, that's just related to how this jack is used for switching the power sources. Uh, if you wire it backwards, it won't damage anything. You just, what you won't see is that uh, this LED, so the power LED lit up here. Let me just unplug this. So you can see it's off. It's a little hard to see with the light. Uh, and it turns on green when I plug that in. So if you did that backwards, it just wouldn't light up. So there's the, the setup that we need. Um, and what you can see is this, the lab reports goes through all this as well. Um, and depending on how your initial jumpers are set up, what you might see is that this blue uh, LED goes on. If it doesn't, don't worry about that. You, uh, you may not see that. Right. So once you have this all set up, uh, what we need to do is we're gonna start the Atmel Studio. Um, so this will look something just like this main window here. I'll just move this out of the way. Um, so if we pull up Atmel Studio, uh, and it'll give you a, a blank page like this. So what we need to do, and it goes through it all in the, the lab report here, is we're going to start a new project and set this project up. So just very briefly, I can show you this. Um, so file, new project. And there's two parts to this lab. So in the first part, we're going to do a C, C++. And you select a GCC C executable project. 
Um, where you save it, it doesn't really matter. You can put it somewhere uh, convenient for you. And I'm just going to leave this. Maybe I'll put it in a subfolder. So 3204 labs. And then I'm going to call this application lab one. Um, and let's see, part one. So once this is done, this will take a second. You can see at the bottom, it just says creating project. Oh, there we go. So it should pop up a window. And this window is asking you to select a device. And what we need is we'll need to select the, the microcontroller that's on this board here. Um, so what it is, it's an AT Mega 644. Um, so switching back to the Atmel project, we'll, you can either just scroll down or select Mega AVR, um, and somewhere down here, we'll see 644, uh, and A is the specific one. That part doesn't really matter for what we're doing, but you might as well pick that one, and hit OK. Right, so again, it's just, we'll take a second and it's gonna load all the stuff. Um, at this point, it created a very basic uh, project for us. So we have a template project here, and you can build. So to, to build the code, we go build, build solution. And it's this code doesn't do anything yet, but we want to check that you know everything worked. Uh, so we see at the bottom here, build succeeded. So that's good news. That means everything worked as intended. Um, so the next thing to do is we want to blink an LED. Uh, so to do this, we, we already have the basics of this, so we include this I.O. file. Uh, we need a delay, so we're going to include this util slash delay.h. So this includes some delay routines. Um, and we're just going to modify this, this while loop. So everything's using C, which hopefully you still remember enough. Um, so we set the pin that the LED, we're going to connect an LED on, and we set it as an output. Um, and all this, again, all this demo code is right in the, the lab manual, so you can sort of look at that and copy it over. It's very worthwhile to make sure you write it out yourself and not just copy paste because later labs are going to assume, you know, they're not going to tell you anymore, here's how you blink an LED. They'll just say, just blink the LED. Um, and all I'm going to do is first I'll set uh, the output pins all to zero. And then we're going to wait 500 milliseconds. And then we'll set the output pins pin in question to one. And then we're going to wait 500 milliseconds. So this is a really basic code. And we get a warning here, but it still did build successfully. Uh, so we'll deal with that warning after. So you see it says build succeeded, but there was some, some warning. So there's, the CPU frequency wasn't defined. Okay. So for now, we're gonna go ahead and wire up our LED and see what happens if we ignore that warning. Now this is, how you do this is given in the, uh, the PDF, there's a little photo there, and I'll show you myself wiring it up. So what we need to do is we're going to connect to port B0, uh, because that's the pin that I said I was toggling. So if you look really carefully at the, um, the silk screen here, you can see one that says PB0. So that's the one we need to, the row we need to wire into. And for the LEDs, of course, there's the positive and negative side, so I can see the positive leads a little longer, or you can go by the, uh, the flat side of the LED as the negative. So we could do something like that. Um, we need a resistor to limit the current for the LED so we don't blow it up. Just grab that. Uh, so we have the resistor I found here, um, and I'm using a 330 ohm resistor, the exact value is not too specific. And the other side we'll just bring to a 
ground. So I'll use the, again, this negative is connected up through here uh, to the board. So there we go. All right, so now what we need to do is download the code to, uh, to this guy and check how our blinking is looking. So turn this webcam off. Um, and again, if you go to the PDF, it'll show you how to use this. There's, there's a program called AVR USB Probe, uh, which is installed on lab computers, or you can install as well. So if I run that program, oops, it should all come up. Like this, and uh, what this is doing is it says it's detected the, the processor. Um, if you don't get this, check either your boards aren't plugged together or if some of the jumpers are set wrong, um, you might get that error. So let me pull this back up. Uh, and here it actually shows you um, which way you can set the jumpers up in case. So these are the two jumpers here that um, should be configured like this. If not, you may get errors, or uh, the program itself, once it downloads, it won't run automatically. For now, we're, we're, we're just setting it all up to run automatically. Uh, later on, you don't want that. If you're controlling a robot or something, you don't want your robot to start flailing around. Okay, so the output uh, compiling process generated a hex file somewhere, and we need to go find that and load it into this USB programmer. So say open hex and where did it make it so this lab one part one debug and you just keep clicking to find the hex file and you can see it's telling you actually the data that's being downloaded to the device so this is the output of your system um, and you just hit the program flash and once that goes, you can see the LED. So I don't know if you <coughs> can see it properly here, but it's blinking very, very quickly. Um, it, due to the camera, I think it may appear to be blinking the wrong, the wrong speed. So what's happened is um, there was an error in, it gave us this warning message that FCPU is not defined. Before we include the delay uh, .h, we need to either define the FCPU, which we can do here, or we can do as in the lab, um, as a global define, and then you don't have to worry about uh, configuring it anywhere else, which is sort of a nice thing to do because it's only set in one in one place. Uh, as an example, I could just define it right here. Oops, let me turn off the, the webcam, sorry. So I'm defining the frequency that the system's running at. Um, you can see right here before I include the delay.h. So this is one option. The other option is we can define it uh, globally, so as an for, for the entire program. If you're doing more complex program, this is convenient because you know you don't have to change the frequency in a bunch of spots. It's just set in one location. All right. Anyway, so if I build that, what you'll see is that warning will go away, and if I reprogram, so there's no errors, no warnings, everything's fine. And I can reprogram it just by hitting program flash. It'll detect that the flash file changed. Do you want to reload? Yes. Um, and if I turn the camera back on, you can now see that the blinking of the LED is occurring at a much more regular uh, rate. When I'm looking at it, it's going a lot. It's a proper 500 millisecond delay. Before the delay was wrong, because it didn't know how fast the processor was running. So that is how we do a very basic program in C. Uh, so the other half of this lab is to do the same thing except in assembly. So we'll actually look more at how assembly works in the next lab, but for now all you need to know is how to make a very basic program. Uh, so the hardware is all the same, and we more or less want to do this exact same uh, thing. We want to blink an LED. So let me take you through that. So I'm going to make a new project. I don't need this. 
and rather than selecting C, C, I'll select assembly. And you know, I can give this uh, lab one part two. And same deal, select the uh, Omega ABR. And it just gives you another base thing, so you could try to build it. There's nothing here, it's gonna warn you, hey, this is empty, so it's not generating any code. Um, so at this stage, we're not gonna teach you a whole lot about how the actual um, assembly code works, but what you can see is the example of uh, what this assembly code looks like. Um, so this is at a much lower layer, and we can copy or write this right into the window here. Um, so just to take you through this code, we're including at the, the beginning here, so we include some definition files for the device, so this defines the registers. Um, we have a uh, some register definitions, we have a delay constant here, and we're saying when the code begins, jump to this reset vector. Um, so the reset vector just sets up a bunch of stuff, so we can add some spaces here to make this a little easier. Um, in particular, it sets up the DDRB, so the output pins, as a uh, an output. So the same one as before that the LED is connected to. So you can see it setting this pin, this bit high of DDRB. We then go to this main loop here, um, and all the main loop does is you can see it's just jumping through to main, and it just sets the bit of port B to one, or then it clears the bit of port B to zero. And um, in between, it's doing this calls to these delay functions, and this delay, all it's doing is loading a number of reg a, uh, this delay constant. Um, it subtracts one from the delay constant, and if it's not zero yet, it just branches uh, back three instructions. So one, two, three. Um, and so it goes back to here, subtracts one, branch, subtracts one, branch, subtracts. so it just keeps doing that. Uh, when it finally reaches zero, which just takes, you know, however many times through that little loop we've told it, it then returns back to this calling point. Um, so to use the R call and the ret, the other thing we had to set up is what's known as the stack pointer. Uh, so this is just some space that the microcontroller has to store stuff like where it where it actually jumped from into the subroutine and where it should return to after it's done. So if we hit build, everything should work. And what we want to do now is we need to select a different flash file. Um, so we go lab one, part two, same deal, just click through and hit program. And you'll notice there's differences in sizes between the assembly and the C. So we'll talk about that a little. Um, in the lab, let me turn on the camera. And you can see we, once again, have a blinking LED. So, you know, all this money spent for a simple task, but we've now done it in C and in assembly. Uh, and you have a very basic idea of how to actually make a C or assembly program and download it into this device. And it's worth noting as well. So once this is programmed in Flash, I can, you know, I don't need this guy anymore. And you can power cycle it. So I could take the power out and that program stays in there. So there we go, it's still running. Um, so that concludes lab one.